What's up people? My name is Liam, and today I'm gonna customize this high-grade Nobel Gundam and talk about some shifter paints. Welcome to the Millennial Model Mayhem Content Zone. What are shifter paints? Well, roughly explained, they're a kind of metallic paint where the color will shift or change in appearance depending on how light hits the surface. Like I mentioned in my last video, they're similar to holographic nail polishes, which will also sometimes use the color shifter or shifter terminology. I'm a fan of these kinds of metallic paints. Uh, a couple years ago I picked up the Magic Dust set from Vallejo, and ever since then I'm always looking for excuses to use them on my projects. I like using paints like these because if you apply them appropriately, you can give your metallics a special edge or flair that it's likely to draw the gaze of additional eyeballs. Before I talk about any of my previous projects that use shifter paint or customize any gunpla, I want to check out this cool collaboration product. The box is from Parabellum Games, the makers of Conquest, The Last Argument of Kings, and Turbo Dork. It comes with five Turbo Dork paints, three of which are color shifters, and one model from the Dweghorn faction. And you know I can't turn down an opportunity for some clacks. <laughs> While building this model, which is called an Inferno Automata, I had a similar experience to when I built my Spires and 100 Kingdoms armies from my starter box set in the first Conquest video I did. They're not as easy to assemble as a Games Workshop model, and the aesthetics seem a little unorthodox at first, but once I got it put together it really started growing on me. Like a lot of the models in the Conquest range, it has some traditional fantasy elements, but also some fresh twists that I can appreciate, even if the feet look just slightly comical. I'm not entirely sure how I want to paint this. Since it's just a single model from a unit in the Dweghorn faction, which I don't have an army for, I feel like it's a good opportunity for a one-off diorama style base. With all that being said, the main focus of this video is color shifting paints. If this product, or the game Conquest The Last Argument of Kings, is of interest to you, you can check out the link in the description for my affiliate code MMMAYHEM to save yourself 10%, as well as supporting me with a small commission. Thank you Parabellum for partnering with me, and thanks to everyone who's already used the code so far. It's honestly been a huge help to me this year. Now it's time to check out some fancy metallic color shifting paints. Before I talk about the Turbo Dork set though, I want to talk about that Vallejo Magic Dust set I mentioned earlier. I've had this set for over a year now, and have gotten a lot of good use out of it on a variety of projects. On models like my Ghost in the Shell Barbatos and Brute Drone, I tried to make the shifter one of the more prominent colors but I more often found myself using the paints in a more subtle manner to complement the main colors. All six paints in this set are already thin enough to go through an airbrush, although you still may want to use some flow improver or thinner, depending on your setup. Text on the side of the bottle says they work best with a few thin coats over a glossy black base. Also, each one comes with a mixing ball already inside. There are definitely some colors in this set that I like more than others, and that is mostly due to how pronounced the shifting effect is. The ones I've used the most so far are Pearl Violet, Silver Pink, and Gold Yellow Burnt Orange. The Gold Pale Blue, Violet Old Copper, and Old Silver Pale Violet have a bit more of a subtle shifter effect, so I haven't been drawn to them as often, but I'm determined to find the right use case for them someday. Okay, now it's time to check out the Turbo Dork paints. I gave some test minis a quick coat of black primer, then applied through the airbrush in two layers. 
This is my first time using anything from TurboDark, and I really appreciate the detailed instructions that came in the box for how to properly utilize their characteristics. This set also has mixing balls already placed in the bottles, but they don't come pre-thinned like the Vallejo ones. First impressions of these colors are great. Definitely some interesting color shifting going on here. However, two out of the five paints in this set are from Turbo Dork's regular metallic range. It looks to me like the shifting effect on these paints is a little more pronounced than with the Vallejo ones, and some of the gradients shown on the side of the bottles also seem to include more than just two colors, and that makes me want to explore the Turbo Dork range further. Shell Shocked in particular has a really interesting color shift, but I also really like the more subtle transition of Ground is Lava. Even the regular metallics Cartridge Family and Silver Fox have a really nice shiny finish. Side note, if you were wondering if either of these brands can be hand painted, they can, it just requires a bit more patience to apply in multiple thin layers in order to get a decent finish. I do recommend using an airbrush if you can though. Alright, now that I've shown you those paints, it's time to move on to customizing the Nobel Gundam, which belongs to Blue Parappa. We made an arrangement for Crimbus this year where I'll paint one of her kits, and she'll make me a pair of custom Conk Zero shorts. And I want those shorts. You don't even have to do any sanding. Can you make it ginger ale inspired so it can go along with your Red Bull God Gundam? Of course! This kit is a fairly basic high grade from 2011, but obviously really stands out amongst most Gunpla for having a feminine design, and that's what made this kit a real fan favorite amongst builders worldwide. I know this isn't the only mecha model kit like this available, but I feel like there's a lack of feminine leaning models out there. It would be amazing if Bandai announced a real grade version to go along with the new God Gundam releasing next year. For the painting on this project, I want to make some of the metallic paints I showcased earlier the main colors. With the disassembled Gundam, ginger ale can, and paints in front of me, I selected which paints fit best with the ginger ale theme. This ended up being only one shifter paint, the Vallejo Gold Yellow Burnt Orange, along with the two regular Turbo Dork Metallics, Silver Fox and Cartridge Family. For the green and red elements of the ginger ale can, I'm just using my version 2 G paint. The G paint itself doesn't need any primer, but the metallics do, so the first step is to base coat any areas getting the metallics with black G paint. I want the gold yellow burnt orange shifter paint to be the most prominent color, so that's what pieces like the bows and hair are getting. Cartridge Family is acting as the accent color to the shifter paint in this case, so pieces adjacent to the gold yellow burnt orange, as well as some details that can be masked prior to applying the G paint are getting this metallic. Silver Fox has such a nice sparkly finish to it that I immediately knew that I wanted to paint the underframe with it. All the metallics got a glossy top coat applied, and after sufficient time to cure, I masked off all the parts that are going to get the red and green G paint. Red is one of the minor elements of the ginger ale color scheme, so it's mostly just the blue pieces of the Nobel that are getting it. Despite the main focus of this project being shifter paints, I still wanted to experiment a bit with post shading like I did in the last video, so once the initial coat of red was done, I mixed in some yellow right in the airbrush cup for a quick highlight. I did basically the same process for the green paints. When I was painting the highlight with the yellow mixed in, I tried to do a basic top-down gradient, which worked out nicely except for one of the chest pieces where I did it upside down by accident, but I won't let one mistake slow me down, so time for some satisfying peels. I think my stress levels from the busy holiday season are starting to show through this very hasty masking job. Sorry, Blue Parappa, I can fix it for you in the new year if you like. Nani. Before I reconstruct the model, I need to paint the eyes, which I thought would look best as a red-yellow gradient to add more of the same accent color of the red pieces. So I grabbed a fine tip brush and my reliable P3 Scorn Red, Vallejo Hot Orange, and Gold Yellow to build up the gradient. 
After reassembly, I applied the same gradient to this area on the chest and forehead camera. Usually I give everything a gloss top coat before panel lining, but I want the G-Paint to retain its natural finish in order to help the already glossy metallic section stand out. The G-Paint is lacquer based, so as long as I'm careful with the application and clean up with mineral spirits, I shouldn't have any problems damaging the paint if it's fully cured. Alright, time to see how this looks on stage. Aside from a few mistakes and missed snub marks, I love how this turned out. The gold yellow burnt orange shifter paint absolutely shines across the curves and edges it got applied to, while also being well complemented by the adjacent metallic pieces that are equally as shiny. When I was mixing in the yellow for that speedy highlighting, I was worried it would clash with all the other colors and textures already present, but now I think it actually helps tie the whole thing together even more. Some things I didn't mention about this kit earlier were the neat beam saber ribbons that come included, as well as some replacement hands for the high grade god Gundam that let you pose the two kits together. There you go Blue Parappa, a dazzling ginger ale inspired Nobel Gundam to go with the Red Bull God Gundam. Merry Christmas! That's the most festive I'll get all year. I hope you enjoyed my examination of Vallejo and Turbo Dork paints, as well as my customization of the Nobel Gundam. Was there anything I missed? Or do you have any favorite color shifting paints of your own? Let's have a discussion in the comments section. If you'd like to support my content creation endeavors, you can give me some of that good old free social media engagement. You can check out the affiliate sponsors and links in the description or you can become a patron and or channel member. Like these nice people. Shout out to the Mayhem Machine Bo and Janelle, member of the Gog Hand. Take care of yourselves and stay tuned for my next video where I might just get a little parasocial and show you my model collection, among other things. The algorithm demands that you lock on notifications and annihilate the like and subscribe buttons. And leave a comment.